Welcome back to the jump. Nikola Jokic had a weekend to remember, first finishing a 21-point fourth quarter rally against Joel Embiid Sixers uh -huh. with that late jumper, then hitting another game winner late yeah. against Carl Anthony Dirk. Town and the Timberwolves. So, Cheney, these are two of the best centers in the league. Jokic vanquishing both. <laughs> I don't know. Um, has he taken the best center mantle to you? And again, I want to note, he got the top center spot in the All-NBA voting, but even coming into this season, especially when he came in carrying a little bit extra weight, mm -hmm. people thought, ooh, Joel Embiid, ooh, Carl Anthony Towns. Did Jokic show what he's got? I think Jokic is number two. Oh. Mm. I know this Who might got, be a hot take. I have AD. Even though he doesn't want to be uh, a five, I truly think he's man, best geez. fit for a five position, Needing. especially when the Lakers are shooting. And the reason I go with AD is while Jokic might be the most empowering center, meaning he, he passes the ball extremely well, the only person that's done it better over consecutive seasons is Wilt Chamberlain. Yeah. While he's in a, a great empowering center, he's the crux of their offense, Anthony Davis is just dominant. Mm -hmm. He's dominant. He changes the outlook of games right when he touches the floor. 26 points, 10 rebounds. His assist numbers are coming up three assists per game. Even though AD does not want to be the five, I like him as a five in this league because he can also get you that DPOY, but also MVP on the other end. That is a sneaky take. She's just cheating. That's not how that cheating. No, she's That's so cheating. Off. LeBron's the best five in the league. If he played five all the time, he'd be better than every five out there. Yes, every single five in the league. See, it doesn't work like that. We got to pick the guy who actually plays center, Janae. Sorry, you can't the go off like the menu. This isn't in and out where you go to the secret menu and you say, I'm going to get Starbucks. the AD. We'll have to find out from producer Schwartz where he most crazy. of AD's all NBA votes have been historically. Because yeah. I'm not sure if they've been at center or forward. Mm, that's saying. interesting. Either way, um, I've got an answer. That's not off the board. I'm going to go with Joel Embiid. He's yeah. still better because here's the reason, right? You can make an argument to me that Jokic is better overall offensively than, than Embiid. You can make the opposite argument as well, that Embiid is a better offensive player than Jokic. But what you cannot make is an argument that Embiid and Jokic are equal defensively. I Embiid agree. is one of the great defensive players we have in this league, and Jokic, at best, still needs improvement. And that, to me, is the difference when you're talking about overall impact because they're both incredibly impactful offensively, but one of them is also incredibly impactful on the defensive end. I'm going... Embiid one, Jokic two, and then Towns three. I, I agree and with Davis all of that. And Davis is a power but, forward. We can list him with the power forward. What matters be happy most is who won the games, and Jokic That's won it. both of those games. Very true. I want to get to DM Waiters because, yeah, you know why. He was suspended <laughs> ten games on Sunday after an incident on the team's plane. Woj and Brian Windhorst reporting that Waiters suffered a panic attack mid-flight after ingesting a THC infused gummy. What's that? ESPN front office insider Bobby Marks believes Waiters' heat days are nearing an end. Listen to this. I, I told an agent this, I, I would be stunned if we ever see Deion Waiters back on the court again, you know, in, in Miami. I would be really surprised just by, we always talk about culture down there, right, as far as him with, um, you know, with the heat culture there. So I guess kind of give your distance to him as far as him being part of this, this group here. All right, Waiters also suspended for the season opener, remember, after publicly expressing frustration about his role mm. with the team. I mean, do you agree with Bobby there? Now, Bobby made a point in this podcast saying it's a little bit of a poison contract. He just kind of expects some separation from the team as opposed to an immediate trade. Right. But do you think that Waiters will ever put a heat uniform on again on the court? I think there's a chance. I think there's a chance. I think uh, there's several things to remember. First of all, he got suspended for 10 games. Oh, surprise, surprise, now he can't hit his bonus, which pays him a million plus for playing 70 plus games. So that's, mwah, great job, Andy, great job, Pat. Remember, <laughs> really working the contract situation there. But the, the reality is this, they're not good enough to tell him to go away. And also, he's not good enough of an asset right now that you can trade him away without adding anything that you like to get him out of there. And also, two years, $25 million remaining on the contract. So not easy enough to part ways with, we'll just pay you to stay at home. So the reality is, while I agree that the Miami culture thing is huge, I think this is the culture at work, that zero tolerance, zero tolerance. Same reason why James Johnson was suspended from training camp. He wasn't even allowed to get to the practice facility during that suspension. Same reason why Dion was suspended for that opener. They are showing that we have zero tolerance for the chicanery that's happened over the last couple of years because Pat Riley said at the end of last year, that's done. Us giving up what, uh, what defines us is over. That makes sense, but I also think this could be a blessing in disi uh, disguise for Deion Waiters just because that 10-game period could actually recalibrate him. I know he's had issues with his teammates getting some shine, a Kendrick Nunn, even Tyler Hero taking some minutes. Maybe that's exactly what he needs, a break to recalibrate his mind and win over his teammates again. If he wants to play and 
be productive and all that, his best thing is to fall in line. Exactly. Contribute, and then they can trade him a lot easier. Because right yes. now, they tried trading him earlier this year. Right, no. And got, had no takers. And right. that was before all and these And they're not going to have takers after no. this. Interesting note, I learned from the Hoop Collective podcast and Bobby Marks talking with Brian Windhorst was that uh, even though he won't be paid that bonus, it still counts still against counts. Miami's mm -hmm. cap, the cap this year. Yeah. So shout out to Andy Slater, by the way. Hard, hard caps. So. Andy Slater, shout Absolute, out to him. Always. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.